And whoa, what a hit! Wow. And the Redskin, yeah. the Redskin got ding that time. Kai Sean Jarrett, number thirty. He's in pain. Yeah, he took the lick right on that left shoulder. So hopefully he's okay. He's had a great rookie year. The hit that changed everything. For Kaishan Jarrett, his rookie year for the Washington Redskins leading up to the hit was going better than expected. Back to pass, Fitzgerald, Fitzpatrick over the middle. It is caught and it is fumbled. It's a loose ball and the Redskins have it. Kaishan Jarrett, the rookie out of Virginia Tech, the Hokie. 54 tackles, one for his fumble, and not to mention a game-changing interception against crosstown rival, the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> However, it's been three years since these accomplishments three years since the career ending hit and after three years of silence i sat down with kaishan to talk about everything leading up to the hit and life after january 3rd of 2016. what was it like you know starting out being that guy for your city to, to, to actually make it it was definitely a huge privilege uh not a lot of people come from this small town east Stroudsburg, pennsylvania uh there's very few such as james mungro you know, Corey Lewis, he's went to Illinois to play. Uh, Sam Bergen went to Rutgers, and then I kind of pop up in a picture. Uh, someone who's just, you know, two-sport athlete, football, track. Um, and I got a lot of support from my community. And that support, you know, from the community, definitely from, from my family, uh, just led me to continue striving, you know, to make it to the next level, which is collegiate. And collegiate, Virginia Tech. Why, why Virginia Tech out of, you know, what is it, Penn State? You had a few schools. I mean, you had a few hometown schools. Why Virginia Tech? Uh, well, to be quite honest, I was originally committed to the University of Pittsburgh. Okay. Uh, that was the Dave Wanstead era. But unfortunately, you know, Dave Wanstead moved on and that opened the doors up again for recruiting. Uh, Virginia Tech, you know, popped up, you know, on the radar. And I just began to think about all the DBs that kind of ran through that school. And it was just DBU from D Hall to Cam Chancellor, Brandon Flowers, Macho Harris. You know, I definitely want to make myself that next name. Of course, the ultimate goal was to make it to the NFL. That dream came true, drafted in the sixth round. Talk about that moment when you get that call saying, hey, like, <laughs> mom, like, it, it's finally here. It's finally here. So just to give you some, you know, background on it, um, I was actually, I actually fell asleep. Wow. So <laughs> I fell asleep because, you know, it was kind of, it's kind of rolling and yeah. I'm just like, Oh man, I just need to kick back and relax. And I woke up and probably 20 minutes later, I get this call and man, it was just chilling. With the fifth pick of the sixth round, number 181 overall, the Washington Redskins select Keyshawn Jarrett, defensive back from Virginia Tech. I don't think I'm able to really encapsulate the feeling of seeing him achieve what he worked so hard to do. So um, I was rather speechless, but full of tears, full of screaming, full of <laughs> joy and laughter. It was an amazing, an amazing accomplishment for the whole family. To know where he was mentally in college, like everything was a grind to get to the league. And so for him to finally get there was just it was exciting for me. I was really, really happy for him. And I, I mean, even though he didn't want to show it, like I could tell this was something, this was huge for him. The dream wasn't free, but the hustle was surely sold separately. After rookie mini camp, Kaishan would earn himself a spot on the 53 man roster. His first start would come week four against division foe, the Philadelphia Eagles. First and 10 handoff to Marco Murray, running to the left, looking for room. Nice job coming up by Kaishan Jarrett. Just the fact that he was on national TV, that was still something that we had not quite absorbed as a family. The transition was quick, it was swift. We trusted it was coming because of all his hard work, but to actually sit on the um, couch and prepare for a game and know that now my son is actually going to be on national television to that capacity was really exciting. And while the excitement continued, so did the stats. 51 tackles, it's a bubble screen to Amendola, beautiful job, Kaishan Jarrett. And two pass breakups later, just gets it off. Beautiful deflection that time. He got three feet off the ground. Kaishan would now prepare for the biggest game of his life. Season finale against arch rival, the Dallas Cowboys. 
I just knew leading up to that moment that going into my sophomore season, I was going to break open the NFL. Although the season wasn't over, it was already in my mind, my next steps to be the best me possible. We're live at Dallas, Texas, actually Arlington, Texas, the site of Jerry World, AT&T Stadium. Five of the Redskins will square off with the Dallas Cowboys, a huge game in the NFC East. And with this game is underway, the run up and the kickoff. Had my jersey on, um, had my little football snacks prepared. It was just my son and myself. I, I would love to have been at the game, but we couldn't make it that to that game um, because of the distance. And so we were preparing. And unfortunately, <laughs> every time the defense sat down, I get up. <laughs> and I used to get up and I would go prepare my snacks or go, you know, do something multitask. And first and 10 at their own seven yard line. The running backs, McFadden, straight give up the middle to him, hit by Jarrett. For those first couple of series, I'm playing ball, you know. Um, not having any issues with tackling. I don't feel any type of way. There's nothing hurting on me. You know, I don't feel no tweaks. And then, uh, you know, two, three series in, you know. Second and 18, first quarter, third drive of the game, seven minutes left on the clock. Walk me through that play. All week throughout practice, us as safeties, we've been rotating. Not necessarily following the tight end over, if that is our main responsibility. And for some reason, during this particular play, you know, I go with my man, just being able to visualize it now, um, you know, tight end sealed back over. I follow my tight end. Second and 18 Cowboys at their 42. Whitten up off the line, goes in motion left. Kellen Moore in the shotgun. You know, it just led me to the play. You know, Derek McFadden hits the hole. Blows his shoulder, ducks his head. And whoa, what a hit! Wow. And the Redskin, the Redskin got dinged that time. It's Kyshawn Jarrett. It's Kyshawn Jarrett, number 30. He's in pain. Next thing you know, I'm on the ground with no feeling. Um, you know, I still remember my first words, uh, God help. It's Kyshawn Jarrett, number 30. He's in pain. Yeah, he took the lick right on that left shoulder, so hopefully he's okay. He's had a great rookie year. Sure has. Could be just a stinger. I'm on the ground with no feeling. Um, you know, I still remember my first words. Uh, God help. Uh, the stadium seems silent. Um, and next thing you know, I have, you know, trainers next to me saying, hey, stay still. Are you OK? Things of that nature. And right before that moment, once again, uh, my body was numb you know, based on the impact of, of the hit. So I'm kicking, trying to feel, and I began to feel the sleep leg coming back alive once you get up and start to walk. And that's what I felt, but I couldn't push up off my right arm. I was at a watch party with wives and girlfriends and everyone who just didn't go to the game. And all of a sudden it kind of just got real quiet. And it was that feeling of just knowing everyone is staring at you. And I could tell by the look on their faces, it wasn't like a good stare. So I looked up at the TV. They had this big projection of the game on the wall, and he was on the ground. Kyshawn Jarrett, Kai Sean Jarrett, number 30. He's in pain. Yeah, he took the lick right on that left shoulder, so hopefully he's OK. He's had a great rookie year. Sure has. Couldn't mean it's a stinger because he's in pain. Yeah, I knew something was wrong, and I knew I couldn't get right up. And complimenting to that, my family knows that whenever I take a hit, whenever I hit someone, whether I do get dinged up or not, I'm gonna pop back up. That, you know, reassures them that I'm okay. Um, and this time I could not. Nice play by Kashawn Jarrett again, taking him down at the 35 yard line. Hmm. Hmm. Anytime that day is mentioned, it's kinda, it re, I could see the replay in my mind is as if I'm still standing. And I did not make it back to the couch by then because the defense got up, Kaishan was in position, and if any time I can see him on a TV, I would yell, yell at his name and be as loud as I was at any game. And I was standing at the end of the television, at the end of my TV console, when I heard the hit, and I, saw, I, I literally heard it, uh, the way he hit the floor, it resonated in me. Kaishan has always been tough. He's just been tough. They never understood why he was so tough at his size. And I never seen my son in his whole entire football career 
be shaken. Um, and then I saw everybody run into him and that made me nervous. So my phone started to ring. Friends, family, he's fine, he's gonna be fine because they know how I feel about my sons and um, he's gonna be fine, he's gonna be well. I'm like, oh, oh, you know, okay. The phone was ringing back to back. I couldn't click over enough before somebody else called me because they went to commercial and I could not move. I remember I stood at that side of that television until it came back on, um, until the game came back on. So I'm like, oh my God, he's really hurt because they made, they, they went to commercial. I didn't, um, and my heart just raced. I, could, I was hyperventilating, I couldn't breathe. And because I'm a woman of faith, I just started calling on God. I just started calling on God. And I made my way to the couch. <laughs> I made my way to the couch and I just sat there and I said, Lord, you promised. I'm sorry. I said, Lord, you promised. And by the time they were bringing him off the field, he had tears in his eyes. I've never seen any pain bring my son to tears. Doc, you've had stingers. Some, they kind of shock you so much you don't kick around like that. Yeah, let's see. He sold it as right arm, immobile. It's a right arm and shoulder injury. If you can't move it, it's not good. You know, when I was in the back where they escorted me to, um, I'm going through extreme pain, extreme pain. My right arm is on fire, literally. I'm like, can somebody get me some medicine? Like, I needed something to calm me down. Um, I'm shaking, I'm crying, to the point of light touch. Sent me through the roof, through the roof. One of his peers was kind enough to answer his phone as I kept calling him because I figured by this time he's gone to the back and uh, he said he can't talk right now mom he's in a lot of pain but I'll keep you I'll keep you abreast so it was a really surreal and very scary time for me. Ball players get hurt a lot it's a physical sport sometimes violent but rarely do we see anybody injured to the point where either their life is threatened or their career is threatened and his seemed to be one or the other. Uh, not, not so much life-threatening, but career-threatening. Um, he had no feeling in his arm, which meant there was some nerve damage. We didn't know how much. We didn't know the extent. We thought maybe it was a stinger and he'd get over it until the x-rays. And so I don't remember everything that I said, but I do know that I said I, I, I know God is with him and that uh, there are going to be better days, even though the days through which he's going are not going to seem very good that he's not done, that life is going to continue, and somehow or another he's going to, meaning the Lord is going to really inspire him to greatness. You know, we'll finally get into the ambulance car, take me to the hospital, and I'm just thinking, okay, how long is it gonna be? You know what I mean? Is it gonna be, you know, a six to eight month thing? Is it gonna be, you know, I'll be back. Like, I bounced back quick from injury, what's up? Like, already in my mind, but at the day, at the day, at the month, at the month, one year, two years, it just keeps going, it just keeps going. Right after the injury, we got married. Um, so that month of preparation before a marriage when everyone's all excited and lovey-dovey, we were kind of like, on edge because he was in so much pain he was sad it was it was hard i remember you know he kind of told me like you're gonna have to help me um and i think that was when i realized like okay this is gonna be a little different than we thought but i mean we worked it out can't tell in pictures. <laughs> um, it was almost like a smooth transition with the putting the ring on the fingers. I kind of knew how to like hold his hand so that people didn't notice that he couldn't lift his arm up to put the ring on his own finger or my finger. Um, when we were taking pictures, he was struggling to put his hand on my hip. So we kind of just, you know, I would kind of just slide his hand up for the pictures or our first dance, things like that. Um, so, I mean, we felt each other out. I think we worked like a well-oiled machine. We kind of just, 
we learn how to make it work. <laughs> you watching this. That means I'm letting you watch. My name is Kaisho and Jared. Former player of the Washington Redskins. I completed one year of the NFL. Not even completed. Because the last game of the season of my rookie year against the Dallas Cowboys, January 3rd. I suffered an injury, which sustained nerve damage to my right arm. To have the same mobility that I have in my left arm. As you can see, atrophy is taking place. My left is bigger than my right in the same mobility that I once had, it's that much harder. But I'm grateful, I'm blessed, because what doctors say I wouldn't be able to do, I've done. But it hasn't been due to my own strength. It has definitely been because of the Lord's strength. It hasn't been easy. Today is September 12th, 2016. Earlier today, I had my first interview ever to be a substitute teacher. I don't know if it's according to God's plan, but I just want to show him that I'm not going to quit. I'm going to continue to work. I'm not going to sit around and just say, you know, Lord, heal me and not put the effort in here on earth. I work every day in terms of trying to gain strength back in my arm and the same mobility that I once had but it's nowhere near easy it's nowhere near easy I definitely had to fight to a different level mentally than I ever had before it's not about football no more my life has always been football still trying to figure out what I'm good at what I'm not good at but I know I'm good in the Lord and I will continue to strive and work to be the best man that I could be. And I'm truly grateful. Got some kids coming to the field. It's school time right now, so I'm about to shut it off. Just wanted to say hi. During, you know, these last three years of, you know, I wouldn't say hiding, but, you know, trying to put your emotions into, into words. What were your emotions like during these past three years? When we think about the hit in, the, you know, a couple weeks after, um, there weren't many answers being provided to me. And uh, all I had to do was wait, I had to wait till the swelling went down, I had to wait till the four month mark. Once I got to Mayo Clinic, I wouldn't say that wasn't the roughest part. I believe the pain was very severe, so, um, and pain medicine wasn't working. Um, I was still feeling it while going through the neurological medicine, so I relieved myself from that, and I just kind of had to eat the pain. As time continued to go on, I felt like I began to experience, you know, depression. Um, and as time continued to go on, it was many thoughts of not wanting to be here anymore um, because of the dependency that I felt like I had on the game of football, which I didn't realize until I had to look myself in the mirror and just be like, you know, Kai, like, what is wrong with you? Like, this, this isn't you. That first year, I mean, there were times we went a week, 10 days, we just didn't talk to each other. And for me, I took everything personal. I had to learn how to just be there for him and he had to learn how to let me be there for him. And so I think that was our biggest learning experience. That was one of the biggest things we had to learn. And I remember on our one year anniversary, we kind of just looked at each other like, man, we're still together. <laughs> a man defines a lot of who he is by what he does. And when you play football from the age of five or seven or nine or whatever, level all the way to where you can make it professionally, which is every kid's dream who puts on a helmet. And pretty much your life is defined by football. And so when the thing you've done the best has not been taken away, 
There has to be some inspiration that allows you to understand that you're here for more than just one thing. And that's, that, that thing has, has largely defined you, that doing. You're here for being. And you've got to be an excellent husband. You're gonna have children, you've got to be an excellent father. You've got to be an example. You know, somebody who can overcome very difficult adversity that changed the entire course of your life and was able to scratch out of earth an existence that was not only provisional but fulfilling. Yeah, so as much as the information that I was able to be given um, from either the PTs he was working with or the doctors that he was seeing, uh, it, was, it, was, it was much different than anything I had dealt with, to be honest with you. Um, you know, people come to me to get bigger, stronger, faster. They have performance goals. Um, correctives were few and far between. Although I've had a lot of corrective clients walk through my door, uh, it wasn't something that I was, uh, you know, privy to often. So, you know, once I found out the nature of the injury, you know, my mind started spinning and twirling and me being a, a gatherer of information and somebody who likes to learn different things, I was able to you know, piece together certain things that I thought might be able to help him, um, but still not knowing where he was with a lot of the information that one PT versus another doctor versus this doctor was telling us, um, you know, it was tough for me to help implement that. But I think uh, it has definitely expanded my knowledge to now where we are full go on the, on the recovery process and the rehab, strengthening up his, his muscles, um, you know, trying to, trying to battle everything that, you know, a year and change to two years has, has compounded on, you know, we have to now, you know, step by step go backwards. And, um, you know, I, th I think it's going to be a, a, a grind. And I think the patience that he has learned throughout this time is going to help him get through that grind. But um, it, it's, a, it's definitely a journey that I'm, that I'm excited to walk with him, you know, because it's next level after after you see what he's going to go through um, and what he's going to come out of. People dealing with this injury, I know you said you want to, you know, be that voice for, for those people. What would you want to tell them? This injury is more common in childbirths, um, you know, motorcycle accidents, um, gunshot wounds to, you know, cops and things of that nature, and uh, not very common in football. But to people who are going through this, who are experiencing it, um, it's okay. It's okay. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm human. You know, I'm just like you are. I've cried tears. You know, I've just wanted to be alone at times. And um, <laughs> it's okay. Like, your, self, your image. It's okay, you know? You don't have to feel doubt, you don't have to feel shame. Think of yourself as being unique. Um, and that's some of the things that I've had to focus on. You know, it's okay to be unique, it's okay to be different. Um, uh, but it's more important to love who you are and love yourself despite what others may de think is different. At 25, you surely can't define what the next 70 is gonna look like. But I think that he is on the road to figuring that out. I think he's got a message for young people that's invaluable. I think he's got a message for those who are coming in the league that is really important. I think his, his very person in that he still has hope in getting up and, 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 and doing things that are helpful to others and forging out a career is encouraging after three years. Um, I, I, I know this, that whatever is next for him, is going to be great for him. So I would encourage you to always pray, to always impart into your children, no matter what they're doing, the tools that they're going to need to face challenges because challenges are going to come. And always support the person, not just the craft that they are entangled with because they are more than what they do. And, and, and the message that I used to get all the time is Kaishan is going to be fine from heaven. And Kaishan is just fine. So God didn't lie before and he didn't lie now. There's a plot to every story. With that said, what would be just your personal storyline? 
my personal storyline, I would have to say is uh, the man in the mirror. Because it was a lot of times where I had to look myself in the mirror and say, hey Kai, like who do you want to be? Is it this up and down, consistent roller coaster? Or do you want to be someone who is strong in faith? You know, who is mentally strong, physically strong, spiritually strong, um, and what that looks like. And that's confronting, you know, pain. You know, at the end of the day, looking myself in the eyes and saying, hey man, you know, this is what you're going through. It's okay to feel what you feel, but what is that next step to overcoming it and then taking that step? Sometimes taking that step is hard, but that step has been taken. So it's definitely the man in the mirror.